when it comes to the compare method so i will be passing two different string to modify one or more substring i will be using the pattern or regular expression hello everyone i welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on manipulating strings so guys yes we have uh, discussed some of the basic concepts along with that we have discussed some of the methods which is related to the strings so now what exactly that we have uh, with respect to the strings in this session it's time for all of us to check the agenda so guys i will be discussing how exactly we will be inserting a string to a particular position using a insert method so in the first topic along with that what are the different methods that we have what are the different uh, you know topics that we have to compare two strings is what i will be discussing with the second topic and also i will be discussing the array of strings so guys the last topic for the day is all about the regular expressions so guys without wasting much of your time let me take you to the session so with the concept called insert function or the insert method here you can observe here i have yes one what exactly that i have taken yes one yes one is a string that i have so for that string i'm using the method called insert this method takes two important parameter so the first one that i have here is three what is the meaning of three sir three is the index where exactly i want to insert this r so that is what i am specifying so this is how i will be inserting a particular character in a particular position by mentioning the index that's what you need to remember with respect to the insert method so fine moving forward to the next one that i have is how do i compare two strings so basically i follow three different methods to compare two strings the first one that i use is all about compare method so how exactly we are using this compare method in detail i will be discussing that in the next slide so in the same way i will also use one of the method that is easy equal to is it no equals method and then i will be using two equals to operator so fine how exactly all these three are different from each other is what i will be explaining now so guys when it comes to the compare method so i will be passing two different string that is what i will call it as a yes one comma s2 so it compares so once it compares it returns the integer value it returns the integer value so what kind of integer value it returns so observe carefully now so guys it returns zero when it returns zero when both s1 is equal to s2 sir how exactly it is comparing it is comparing like you know with the alphabets what i have with the ascii values so that is what you need to observe here say for example if i write a and if i have small a here here i have capital a and if i have small a this is in a yes one and this is in a yes two when the comparison happens so guys capital a is different from small a that is what you need to remember because the ascii value for both the characters what i have here is different that's how the comparison happens all right so fine so if s1 is equal to s2 it returns zero that's what you need to remember suppose the positive integer if i have one what happens so s1 is greater than s2 the ascii value what i have in the s1 is greater than the ascii value what i have in the s2 so only then i will get the positive value so guys i will also get the negative value when s1 is less than s2 sir what is this less than as i told you it will compare the ascii value that's what you need to remember so this is how my compare method is working for me so how exactly then equals method is working so what is the answer what is the result that i will get when i compare two different strings so observe here yes two is a string which i am comparing with the s1 so now what will be the result if both the strings are equal then it will return true otherwise it will return false that's why you need to observe here i have boolean i'm creating the object called boolean okay so for that boolean data type i'm creating the object that is b1 so it stores only true or false it returns only true or false so that i will be storing it here in b1 that's what you need to observe here in the same way guys i use is equal to i will just compare s1 is equal to is equal to yes 3 is it yes 2 that's what i have here observe i have two strings s1 is equal to is equal to yes to this you guys used to do it you know normally in all other uh, programming language you are just comparing it 
So that's not a very new thing to all of you, but this equals and the compares to is a two different thing that we are discussing in this session. All right, that's how we compare the two different strings using three different methods. Moving forward to the next one that we have, finding a substring. Substring in the sense what? Say for example, I have a string like, you know, uh, let me just write beautiful, okay? So this is my string, correct? Do you all agree with me? Yes. In this, a part of the string, okay? So that's what I will call it as a substring. So this F-U-L is a part of the string, right? So that is what I will call it as a substring. Now, I need to identify a part of the string. How do I identify a part of the string? So using these two methods, I will be able to identify a part of the string. So how exactly these two methods is working for me? So guys, now imagine this yes dot. Sir, what is this yes dot? Yes is a string that I've taken. See, for example, yes is equal to. So what I have inside the yes, I have beautiful inside the f. Oh, that's what you need to wrap, sir. So fine, yes is a variable of type string where I have stored my string. So fine, yes dot sub string is a method that I'm using. That's what you need to observe here. Substring is a method which I'm using. So I am passing the parameter n. What is the meaning of n? So from where it should start? That is what I have given the n. From the nth position, it should start. That is what I have given. So that's what the meaning of n. From the nth position, you start and extract the substring. So but observe here, I have n1 and n2. So what is the meaning of n1? From the position n1, you start and when the position n2 occurs, you stop there. So this is the start value and this is the stop value. So what is the value, sir? So guys, you need to remember, please don't forget. So we always use the index to extract the values. So n in the sense, I'm passing the index from this position you start. So n1 in the sense, from this position you start, n2 in the sense, this position you stop. So for example, so n, if I specify like this, from this position you start and extract the substring. Suppose if I specify n1, okay, and here n2, from this position to this position you extract the string. That's the meaning that you need to remember when I'm extracting the substring, all right? So going forward to the next one, array of string, you all know that we have an array, okay? I will be able to store multiple values. But I have something called string. So what is the meaning of string? So guys, I will be able to store the string inside the array. That's what you need to mention or you need to observe here. I will be able to store the strings inside the array. So I will be able to access the string using the index. That's what you need to remember that as an array of strings. Moving forward to the last topic for the day. Guys, regular expression in the sense what? I will give you some pattern, okay? I will give you some pattern, say for example, uh, the name ends with S-A-D, okay? Say for example, Prasad, okay? So the name ends with S-A-D, this is the pattern that I have given, okay? This is what I will call it as a regular expression. I'm giving the pattern, regular expression in the sense, you're giving some pattern. So why do we use this pattern and how do we use this pattern? What is the use of this pattern is what I will be discussing one by one with you all. So let's understand. Why do we need that? To locate the substring and to return them. So we use the pattern to locate the substring. So imagine this is a string. If I want to locate the substring, I will be using the regular expression. That's the first thing that you need to remember. To modify one or more substring, I will be using the pattern or regular expression. If I want to modify anything, say for example, wherever you find SAD, you replace something. Okay, that's why I will be using the regular expression. And the next one, to identify the substring, that begins with or ends with. Say for example, I need to find the name which starts with, you know, which ends with SAD. Or I need to find the name which starts with PRA. So like that, I will be using the regular expression to find the name which starts with or ends with something, the substring. That's what you need to remember with respect to the third point. Right. Fourth point, with all the words that begins with a group of characters and ends with some other characters. So for this also, we will be using the regular expressions. Basically, we have something called wildcards. So exactly it is working like a regular expressions. So we have a pattern. We try to match that pattern to extract, to return, to modify. All right. So that's why. And to identify. So we use the regular expression as what? Uh, uh, they mentioned here as an advantage and also to find all the occurrence of the substring patterns and many more all the advantages that we have with respect to the regular expressions. 
So this is what you need to remember with respect to the string manipulations. So this comes to an end of this topic. So guys, take care. Bye bye and wait for my next session, which is going to be very, very interesting with respect to the unit two chapters. Bye bye.